So I'm still talking about this guy and his top five reasons why he no longer believes in the globe, and I'm explaining to you why those aren't good reasons at all. Let's continue. Another place we see false curvature can be found from what's called a uh, fisheye lens. As a photographer, I know personally how these lenses work, and they simply distort a straight line, such as the horizon. It's easy to tell the true nature of a straight line, say the horizon, when it is in the direct center of the frame. Well, you should know that lens distortion can be corrected in post. I've tried to do it myself, but it's a pain in the ass, mostly because I don't really know what I'm doing, but maybe one of these days I'll be successful. Anyway, yeah, with a wide angle lens, lines in the middle of the frame are more accurate, so let's look at such a frame. Huh. Interesting. Number three, no movement. Movement of the earth, whether it is the thousand mile per hour spin wobble on its axis, or the blindingly fast speeds it's going around the sun or moving through the Milky Way, they are never observed, felt, or even recorded ever in history. It's never been measured or have been found to move and just speculated in theories. It's perfectly still and we can prove this using science and repeatable experiments. Look, we don't feel motion, we feel a change in motion. Kinda like how if a bus was to travel at high speeds, but at a constant speed and in a constant direction, you could easily walk up and down the bus, but you're going to have difficulties if it decides to turn a sharp corner or slam on its brakes. We don't feel the Earth moving around the sun or the sun around the galaxy because even though we're moving pretty fast, not much is changing. You can calculate the acceleration we experience due to these things, and it's hardly there. But then again, it is free fall, so you wouldn't be able to feel it anyway because special relativity, but I don't want to get into that right now. But we do have ways of telling that we are moving as such. There's stellar aberration and parallax, as well as red shifting and blue shifting. So, to put it simply, while slight, the stars are moving in a way that is consistent with these theories. The gyroscope is an instrument that will retain its rigidity in space and should appear to turn if the surface it is on is rotating, such as the Earth should. So in fact, if the Earth were spinning at all, we would notice this movement in the gyroscope. However, we can see that we observe no motion. We are perfectly still and going nowhere. There are lots of potential complications with using a gyroscope for this. You need to make sure that the gyroscope is able to move independently enough from whatever it's mounted on. You need to minimize friction and air resistance. You need to have a high quality and sensitive enough gyroscope and a understanding of how the gyroscope is supposed to react depending on your latitude. But there is a better way of making a similar observation, and that is with a pendulum. If you have a pendulum that can keep going long enough, and you let it swing exactly straight, without any interference, the direction of its swing will slowly rotate because of the rotation of the Earth changing the pendulum's position and there's no other explanation for this. This is much easier to replicate, and it's seen in a bunch of museums, though this does work better the farther away from the equator you are. The Michelson-Morley experiment also found this as well. When the experiment found out that the Earth was not spinning, along comes Einstein to the rescue to make up his theory of relativity, which is just a theory and has never been fully proven. You clearly don't understand what the Michelson-Morley experiment was. It wasn't testing the rotation of the Earth, but instead it was trying to detect the motion of the luminiferous aether, which doesn't actually exist. See, before special relativity, we didn't know much about the nature of light, and the thought back then was that light moved through its own medium, called luminiferous aether, and it was also thought that the Earth was moving through this medium, and the medium thereby moving relative to us, and apparent motion they called aether wind, and that is what this experiment was trying to test, and it detected no aether wind at all. So this was some strong evidence against aether theory, and not the only one, so we still needed an explanation for 
quite a lot of things, actually, and that partly led to the proposition of special relativity. So, what does this have to do with the rotation of the Earth? Pretty much nothing. You could argue that these findings were consistent with a stationary aether, but that was debunked as well. But you want to say that special relativity is just a theory. Not only does that show just how scientifically illiterate you are, because a scientific theory is something that has been rigorously demonstrated and proven over and over, but in order for you to say that the Michelson-Morley experiment proved a stationary Earth, that relies on the existence of luminiferous aether, and aether theories, even though we call them theories, confusing I know, are not theories. They are merely hypotheses. That means that they were never proven, never demonstrated, but merely presented as a possibility, suggested and suggested to be researched. They were researched, they were studied, and we found no evidence of any aether whatsoever. So if you want to dismiss special relativity as just a theory, then go off, do some research on the tests of special relativity, and there are many, and to come back with something that's actually better and not centuries behind. Okay, so Nikola Tesla disagreed with Einstein. So what? At that time, relativity wasn't as well proven as it is now, and Tesla had been working for a long time in electrical and mechanical engineering, as well as a bit of physics, under the beliefs that were common at that time. It takes a lot of convincing to change everyone's minds about the fundamentals of physics. But he wasn't exactly an expert. Hell, he didn't even believe in electrons. That's right, the inventor of the Tesla coil of the induction motor and several other electric things did not believe in electrons or any other subatomic particle for that matter. Does that mean that they don't exist? No. No, it doesn't. Aries' failure was an experiment that proved that the heavenly bodies are in motion, while we are not, using telescopes with water. Telescopes have to be very slightly tilted to get the starlight going down the axis of the tube because the Earth's speed around the sun. Airy filled the telescope with water that greatly slowed down the speed of the light inside the telescope and found that he did not have to change the angle of the telescope. This showed that the starlight was already coming in at the correct angle so that no change was needed. This demonstrated that it was the stars moving relative to a stationary Earth and not the fast orbiting Earth moving relative to the comparatively stationary stars. If it was the telescope moving, he would have had to change the angle. Again, you show that you don't really know what you're talking about. See, George Airy's experiment wasn't trying to test the motion of the stars, but instead he was trying to detect aether drag. Yes, we're going back to aether theory and wave theory, which kind of go hand in hand, if they're not the same thing. They might be the same thing. Anyway, uh, he didn't prove the Earth stationary, but instead he just failed to detect aether drag because, again, aether doesn't exist. But why would you need to tilt the telescope in the first place? Well, like you said, because the Earth's speed around the sun. And that's very true, if a little odd for a flat earther to say. Anyway, this is because of a phenomenon called stellar aberration. And the whole point of the experiment was that if aether existed, we wouldn't have to tilt the telescope at all, because once light entered the telescope, it would start moving relative to the aether within the telescope, and you would just be straight up. But there was no change in tilts needed, which showed that there was no aether drag, which was very strong evidence against the existence of aether. But there is still stellar aberration, so we definitely are moving relative to the stars. Another strange fact I'd never considered is the fact that airplanes would have to do all sorts of maneuvers just to land on a surface that's spinning at a thousand miles per hour in one direction. It would simply be impossible for them to land and wouldn't they fly faster to their location if flying against the spin of the ball? This crazy mess does not work, and it's far from what is real and what we see and observe. Okay, look, when you take off from any sort of aircraft, you take off from ground that's moving, and into air that is moving relative to the ground. So even when you're in a helicopter, or in an airplane, or jet, or whatever, 
you're still moving relative to the ground because your frame of reference hasn't changed. In fact, flight simulations always use a flat, non-rotating Earth to train pilots, and the training of these pilots is extremely important for the safety of you, myself, and many, many more. Assuming that they don't, because they don't really know, why would they go through the effort of putting some complex physics into a flight sim when it wouldn't really affect all that much, since it's relative to your frame of reference? But there are a number of phenomenon that we do observe because of the Earth's rotation, like the Coriolis effect, which I'm sure you've heard of, as well as the Erdvush effect, I don't know how to pronounce that, but it's where you weigh more when traveling westward and less when traveling eastward because of the centrifugal force, which is pretty interesting. And just like that, we're out of time again. I'm like two-thirds into this video, so maybe the next episode will be the last one. I don't know, but I hope you enjoyed watching, and a lot of you probably wouldn't because you're like that, but I appreciate the ad revenue. Anyway, thank you for watching, and goodbye.